Hi, John Hess from FilmmakerIQ.com. You may know me from producing long-form, very comprehensive, very in-depth videos about the history of or the science of any particular filmmaking topic. And trust me, I still want to produce that kind of content because I find it fascinating and they're fun. But they are they do take a lot of time and they take a lot of effort. And I don't get to show you guys the little tiny tips and tricks that I learn along the way. So I'm producing this new series, I'm gonna call Just One Thing. And we'll show you just one thing, one little tip or trick that I pick up along my filmmaking journey that hopefully will help you out. So today we're gonna talk about green screen and shooting something that's green on front in front of a green screen. Now conventional wisdom is that you do not want to show up in a green shirt in front of a green screen and you should not because let's not make our jobs even harder. But sometimes things happen and you have to have something green in front of a green screen. It's not a death sentence, okay? I've I just and I, I discovered this uh, just recently where I thought, man, I'm going to be sitting there rotoscoping this but turns out I could actually pull something green off of a green screen. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's go into After Effects here. So I got a shot here of my two favorite little bunnies in the world. This is Axel in the middle, and this is his sister, Asia. And they are hanging out on this. They were, I mean, they were not particularly happy to be here, but <laughs> they were hanging out here in front of my green screen with these fake green plants, which luckily they did not chew on because they know better. <laughs> they don't, it doesn't taste very good. So how are we gonna pull a green screen from this footage? Now this footage is from the Canon C200. It is compressed 420. So I'm not going with the raw option here. This is very everyday average compressed, inner frame compressed. I think it's XAVC footage. Nothing particularly special, although it is in 4K and 4K does make our life a lot easier here. So I've already created a composition in After Effects. I've already got myself a background plate. There it is. And I'm just going to apply a key light plugin using control spacebar and FX console from uh, Video Copilot, which is a very useful thing and it's free. Definitely check out FX console. Type in key light. I just need to type in the word key and it would have gotten it already. And I'm going to pull, using the key light, I'm going to use the eyedropper and pull green from, let's say, right here. And there it is. The key is pulled. But immediately you see how terrible this looks, right? I and mean, we've got we've got big holes in the in the green section here. We've got look at that. I mean, that's just coming across like crazy. It's just it's just ugly. And if I show you the screen matte mode, now here black is everything that's going to be uh, transparent, and white is everything that's going to be opaque. You can see that man, oh man, those leaves are giving us a nightmare, right? And you actually see the macro blocking, so you can see how compressed this footage really is. You can actually pick it out. You can see the actual blocks of uh, color information in there. So this is unusable, right? Well, it just takes a little more effort. And this is where a property of key light comes in called screen balance. Now, the way key light works is it looks at the three color channels, green, red, and blue, to determine what, whether a pixel is going to be transparent or opaque. And screen balance, because, because if you're working with green screen or blue screen, you're going to have one of those three channels be the most dominant. So green screen is going to have a lot of green information in the green channel. Blue screen is going to have a lot of information in the blue channel. Screen balance asks, what do you do with the other two channels? If it's set to 50, it means it's going to treat both the other channels equally when it's making that comparison. Again, I'm not going to go too much into detail. This is not the video for that. But I think of screen balance as a way to kind of push the color sensitivity. So if, uh, you can see it better if we go into After Effects here. So this is a screen balance of 50. If we push it all the way to zero, watch what happens to the leaves. The leaves get even more transparent. So somewhere in the z when we push it to zero, it's becoming more like the green screen in the background. Probably it's actually going to blue. Now if we push it the other way, notice how the leaves get more gray. And gray is where we can work with it. So here it is as 100, and here it is at 50. Notice the big difference there, right? So at 100, it's sort of grayish. It's not as black as this green screen back here. That's solid black. The leaves are more gray. And if they're gray, that means we can work with it. We can go into our screen matte mode, 
bring down our clip white as we keep going further and further down. Notice how the leaves get less and less full. And then right around, I would say 35, 30, we got most of it, right? Most of it. Let's just go, let's go, let's, let's go with 30, even 30. We just got a little few black specks left. We can deal with that later. Then we have a lot of little black specks on the background. So we'll just bring our clip black up a little bit to get rid of that. All right. And there we go. If we go back on our final result, there we go. A pretty decent little key going on right here. Not bad. Some little noise in the, in the details. And that's okay. But you notice right off the bat, <laughs> those leaves, they got nasty, didn't they? That looks like carrot tops that you've left in the refrigerator for like a month. They just look wilted and disgusting. So in order to get rid of that, we need to go back into our screen matte mode and switch it from soft color replacement to a source. So what's going to do is replace the information on the, the plate. Instead of using a soft color, it's going to use the original color from the original plate. So we're going to click source. And now our green is back to the color that it was in the beginning. So we compare that, see that. But the problem is now we got all this edging crap. And there are a lot of ways to get rid of that. A lot of edge techniques, but for this video, we're gonna do a quick and dirty screen shrink. Just go down five pixels, and that takes care of most of the most of the edging issues. And give a little, give the bunnies a little bit of a haircut. It's not terrible, not too bad. I'll buy it. It's pretty good looking to me. But now, if you play it back, we'll notice all those little specks. Holy moly, there's little specks going on all over the place here. If there's one thing I want you to get from this video besides the screen balance technique, it's that green screen is not necessarily a one-click operation. Now, if it, if it is a one-click operation, fantastic. You did a great job. But if it isn't, don't feel bad. You didn't fail. In fact, Professional Hollywood, they have green screen artists working with, you know, multiple different layers, multiple different green screen techniques, rotoscoping, it all comes together to try to get the best image possible. Don't think that if you didn't do it with one tool that you failed. So the technique we're gonna use here is just masking. Now, since these leaves don't really move that much, the periphery moves more than the actual leaves themselves, I can create a little mask around it and get rid of all the little tiny annoyances, right? So I just go ahead and draw a little mask. Again, you don't have to be precise here. You're just trying to find where the holes exist. That's probably pretty good. Go and round it up, finish it off. And there's our kind of our garbage mask. I'm going to go into our mask mode, switch it from add to none. So it doesn't actually create the transparency itself. And then go into the key lights option of inside mask, switch that from none to mask. And it's automatically replaced mode is source. So now when we play back, we don't have all the little bouncing little things going on right there. Now you might see some more details here that are still a little bit rough. We can also use things like matte choker, which kind of go through and kind of get rid of some of the, the more annoying little details um, in the footage itself, in the actual key. So that looks pretty clean. Now to kind of make, sell the effect more that these bunnies are actually hanging out at this beach, you should reduce the blur a little bit. You don't always want too much blur in your backgrounds, otherwise you'll lose the effect of actually being there, the, the sense that they're, you're actually being there. So, you know, maybe bring the, the blur down a little bit. Maybe bring it up so you can see the more of the actual background there. Um, one other technique that I can use is a plugin called After King that I found on, uh, on aescripts.com, which is a like a candy store for me. I love that place. But this is a, what I enjoy about their product is the uh, atmosphere. So if I highlight both of these clips and create a little atmosphere behind it, it goes ahead and produces a little soft uh, atmosphere. Now, usually the, the default settings are a little too hot, so I bring it down to like 50. And it just kind of creates this little soft light bend around the subject matter. And then one final thing um, we'll do is add a little bit of more realism is add something called real smart motion blur. 
A real smart motion blur is a plugin. It's a, it's a premium plugin, but it kind of looks at each frame and figures out what the motion blur would be had this not been a green screen shot. And it's useful for kind of selling that final effect. As you can see, maybe a little, as the bunny's moving, you see a little blur on his ear right there. In fact, I'm going to even go back and add just a tiny bit of softness to the green screen, maybe like a three, two or three. Okay, now what we just need to do is maybe add a little, add a quick uh, color correction. And for this, I'm just going to use basic Lumetri. Uh, color temperature. I, I like a little more detail in my shadows. Especially because these bunnies are black, so they have to have a little more detail in the darkness of the shadows. Uh, maybe not so much detail in the shadows. Just a tiny bit down, tap it down just a little bit. Let me bring down the whites a little bit. Okay. Let's go ahead and render. And there you have it. That's how you pull a green screen key from something that has green in the shot. Now, it's not an perfect solution obviously you don't want to you want to avoid putting something green in front of a green screen because it adds more complications and if you're green if the thing that's green in front of your green screen is the exact same color as the green screen then you're probably out of luck because you're with the screen balance you're teasing out that slight difference in the other channels that's what you're doing with that with the balance again what i want you to take from this is green screen is not always a one-step solution it's not even though everybody wants you to do a one-click thing it almost never is. So there's always a little bit of massaging you're going to have to do. And you can spend a lot more time on this and get it just right, but it's all about, you know, going in there and doing the actual work. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. If you didn't find it useful or helpful, well, I apologize. <laughs> My bunnies would be very, very disappointed in that fact. Thanks to our patrons on Patreon. You guys have been awesome helping this channel grow. It's very, very helpful. And then if you want, check out our uh, merch shelf below. It's got some excellent filmmaker IQ gear ready to be shipped to you wherever you are. I'm John Hess from FilmmakerIQ.com and I will check you guys out later. Go out there, make something cool, make something awesome. I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.